I'm Musa Kawila and welcome to the Pope of Pop Culture. If you're on your phone, I hope you're taking pictures of your celebrities, your influencers and pictures of me, okay? Chomi, we are evaging up. Good morning. Ooh. You know, I am Musa Kaola and welcome to our house here at the Pope of Pop Culture. Not me almost dropping down dead when I realized that, you know what, like Tonga had played everyone when she said, you know what, when she spoke about Patel and whatnot. Not this bitch being back with that Gedeche Gisa, you know, that former president, Jacob Zuma, right? They are back together. And then, you know, our friend Lakonga took to Instagram to reveal that, you know, why she's spending quality time with her man and whatnot. And I'm just like, oh my God, where the fuck was Patel? But then, you know, that uh, at the Real Housewives of Durban, she had said, now she's dating. Uh, this Patel and whatever, of which me and my friends, we always knew that it's not true. It's just like some big ass lie because she had to give a storyline. She had been on the first season. She had no storyline. She came to second season. I'm sure, I'm sure the producers were like, oh, bitch, you better say something. You better give something. And then she came up with the whole Patel storyline and whatever. It was so weak. It was so shit because also me and my friends, we also believe that, you know what, they actually never broke up with this. Kedlech Legisa, right? You know, Kedlech Legisa has these many wives and whatever. The first wife is like 150 years old. And then Lakongo is like the new young wife. You know that Lakongo is like a new young wife and whatever. And Lakongo is like in her 20s, early 30s. She's like literally a baby, but she looks like she's 50. I suppose that's what would happen if you mess around with an old ass man and you become the 100th wife or the seventh wife in the picture. It's just so whatever. But you know what, uh, our friend Lakongo, she happy, she doing her thing with her man and whatever they were doing. <laughs> Hold. <laughs> Wait, they were doing the, the two-step thing. Let's take a look. They're doing the two-step thing. I'm like, oh my God. Not Kekeke is doing the two steps from the past and whatever. What the fuck is this? Cha-cha and whatever. You know what? But anyway, like Kongo is very happy. You know, I just back with her man, the, the father of her child and whatnot. It is what it is. But I'm also very much looking forward to the Real Housewives of Durban. We already know that. The, it's uh, premiering on the 1st of February, if I'm not mistaken. It is just going to be a hard mess and I want to see how she's going to maneuver the whole Patel thing. If Patel is still going to be in the picture or, you know, one, she might as well just come out and say, you know, I'm just dating this man or whatever. We already know. It's not like it's a secret or it's some um, whatever, you know. But anyway, there she is with Gilly Hegi, so she's very happy doing her thing and whatever. Congratulations, baby. You landed the former president and whatever. You know what? We're just going to move on. And yeah, but then, wait, 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 hold on, hold, hold the fuck up. I'm still not over the fact that, uh, like, Kongo, you know, at the Real House of Durban, she's not even shooting at her house. She's, she's shooting at some rented house and whatever. I'm like, actually, where is the reality in this reality show, in this reality story or whatever the fuck it's supposed to be? Because she's just been there. They need to get her ass out. You know what? Now that I think about it, I would settle for that boring, slow, as untalented, uh, that bitch, that Londi London that got left by her man, that Truby and whatever. I would rather take her instead of Lakonga because Lakonga is not giving. She's just there. Whenever they want to ask her, she, she can't talk about this. She can't talk about that. Then in my head, I'm like, bitch, what can you talk about really? What the fuck are you there? What are you doing there, you know? But anyway, she's back with her man. Congratulations, baby. We don't give a shit. It is what it is. Anyway, we're just going to move on and talk about, hey, you don't want. There's been this long story that's been progressing and ongoing between Stella Shozy and Sean M. Kiza, right? Obviously, you know what, if you're not familiar with this sort of, of which I think everybody knows, but you know what, a quick recap, you're going to know that uh, she has had many children with Andy Lampisana, then Andy Lampisana left her at the last minute to get married to this nice bitch with a boring personality, and then they got married at the basement, Tamiya, right? Tamiya stealth that man and then married him at the basement, not 
didn't even um, my that bitch with the boot, she didn't even know that there was a whole wedding that was going on because it was planned. Everything was under, you know, it was in the basement. Shame. But anyway, this Taylor and Sean Mkiza, they've been like in this battle because Taylor wants her children and Mamkiza is like, no, bitch, not with my grandchildren, bitch. It is not happening because you want to whore yourself with everyone and do all these type of things and all sort of things and whatnot. So, my kids is protecting her grandchildren and still is like, you know what, I want my damn children. I remember that uh, a friend of mine, you know, one from Durban had said, uh, I think uh, I would remember the last time when, okay, when they went to court, it was on the 30th of September, because apparently, you know, it's Taylor is alleging that um, my kids had kidnapped the children and she doesn't have access to her children. It's been 10 months and whatever, and she ain't seen her children, right? So now there's a whole court battle that is going on and we're not still wanting your children. My kids is like, no, bitch. It is not happening. So you know what? We're following this story. You're gonna remember that uh, if you're following Stello and whatever, you're gonna realize that she's not on Instagram, she's not on Twitter. She's like deactivated all her accounts and whatnot. But then you know what? She's a big time whore as well. You know what? A couple of days back, we had spoken about her being on that airplane, shooting a man with Deboho Tobejane and whatever. And I said what I said. But then probably the drugs are taking its toll and whatnot. Um, Guinea bitch. <laughs> oh, y'all be, oh, mm -mm. y'all better stop taking drugs. But then speaking of Stello, you know what she has, that manager, that funky as thug as manager. I remember, I'm going to tell you, when I think two months back, that manager called me, threatening me, saying that, hey, do you know how much I, I've invested in Stello and whatnot, and I'm not going to let you fuck it up and whatever. I'm like, excuse me, sir, you are threatening me at this point. He's like, oh, no, I don't give a fuck. See the way that you do, but you know what? Leave Stello alone, and how dare you say she smokes drugs then? I'm saying to the man, but then why does she smoke drugs? Because and then I'm like, she did smoke drugs at the weed bank and people saw her take drugs, take mguinho and whatnot. So that's not my fault that she does it. All I did was speak about it and then man's like, oh, threatening me and whatever. I forgot, but he has like a dangerous name. It's just, you know what? But then I just came to say that, hey, welcome Stella bitch and your dangerous thug manager. And I came to tell her that I don't give a fuck. How about that? Anyway, I want to move on and talk about other things. On to other exciting news and things, you know, that are hip and happening and whatever. It's DJ Fresh um, coming forward to say that, you know what, apparently he's won uh, the case against Ntegi Mazwa. He was at that other funky podcast saying that, you know what, he's won... Um, the case against Tsugumazwai, and apparently Tsugumazwai obviously has settled her debt in full and whatsoever. You're going to remember that uh, Tsugumazwai was behind that whole Me Too, I Believe Her, Don't Do Any, when, um, when that other bitch that's accusing everyone, that other bitch came and said, you know what, she was raped by DJ Fresh and that abusive timbre or DJ Euphonic as you rather or whatever. But then you're gonna know that DJ Euphonic had abused uh, our friend Bonang Mateba, you know, like some years back and also it had been a nasty case and whatever. So anyway, now this timbre, you know, he rebranded, it became timbre now. This DJ Euphonic and DJ Fresh were accused and whatnot, but then you know what? We can only do the I believe her, huh? hmm. Because my ass don't wanna get canceled and whatever. So anyway, that shit had happened and then Tsugi Mazwai got sued and whatever for like 400,000 and then she had to pay I think 200,000 of that amount to the lawyers and whatever. But then apparently she has settled the whole amount and whatnot and I'm waiting for a bitch to talk some shit about this whole gender-based violence, wah, 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 because I ain't seen no bitch stand behind me and come forward to say, oh, I believe you, bitch. So anyway, that bitch got what she got, and then it is what it is. Now she's settling, she has settled, and whatever. So it's fine, we're just gonna move on, and whatever, we don't give a shit about the story, or do we? I suppose we believe her, him, them, we believe somebody, I don't know. Oh, this is so nice.
Anyway, moving on to lighter news, you're going to know that uh, Robert Marawa has joined our 94.7. Everybody's excited. You know what? He's like the best sportscaster in Africa or in South Africa, as you rather, or whatever. We don't give a shit. We, we, you know what? We like to gossip over here. <laughs> You don't got time for soccer and all that nonsense. But anyway, everybody's excited for this new venture that he is taking and whatever. So he's going to be presenting or he's joining the same stable as uh, what that fat bitch with a gap, uh, Anele and whatever. Of which, him, hey, I keep wondering why is Anele still on that thing? I'm like, I'm wondering because I've never enjoyed the show. I try to listen and whatever whenever I get a chance, which is like literally once a year or once in two years, bitch. And I'm just like, oh my God, what the fuck is happening? I just find her screaming. I just find, I don't know. I never enjoyed her on the radio. I don't enjoy her on TV. She's screaming. I don't enjoy watching her. I'm like, okay, whatever. But anyway, Robin Marawa now joins 94.7. Now, Tando Tabete. Tando Tabete, umuhle noma umumbi. Like, can we talk about that for a second? Hold up. Because personally, I don't think Utanda Tabeto Omotes is just a yellow bone, but it's a waste of a yellow bone. I'm like, I get Omotes like last is Luyana in. You know, that's just me, but I don't know what you guys think, whether Omotes or Omombi, but I said what I said. But anyway, back to... <laughs> back to Robert Morau, right? Joining this 94.7 and whatever, everybody being excited. I'm sure you guys that watch sports and like a little bit of gossip, Welcome to the Pope of Pop Culture, bitch. Anyway, uh, everyone is excited. It is what it is. We're just going to move on. We, we don't give a shit about this story. But yeah, congratulations, Robert Marawa. Wait. But then I remember that uh, Pell Tusi done cheated on Robert Marawa. That's why they broke up, right? But Pell Tusi is like, you know what? The chip as a whole and whatever. Cheating on Robert Marawa. <laughs> Oh my God, this is sad. But then you know that Robert Marawa is now dating uh, Nelson Wesbia, right? Nelson Wesbia is on that show, uh, Grey's Anatomy show or whatever rendition of, I don't know what the fuck that shit that plays at ETV that nobody's watching. Everybody can't act, it's just so bad. It's a bad show, I forgot the name, but I know that uh, Nelson Wesbia is like a lead actress. And guess what happened, bitch? Because her acting was not enough, that show got canceled, bitch. And now, what the fuck she gonna do? But at least she can sing. Unlike all the other bitches that can't do shit and whatever, Abu Boiti can't rap, can't can act, can't whatever, but just forcing a career and whatnot. Of which that reminds me of this, Fifi Cooper, is it Fifi Cooper? Or, yeah, it's Fifi Cooper, right? That bitch that's gonna be on the, wait, let me tell you what I had about that, that Fifi Cooper bitch, right? You know, she's coming to the Love and Hip Hop, South Africa and whatever, but apparently the storyline or her storyline is apparently starting like a lot of beef and there's a lot of fight between she and, um, What's that ugly one? That Gigi Lamain, right? Apparently they're fighting a lot in the show and what's so not. And I'm just thinking, okay, you know what? As I said, you know, in the past couple of episodes, that you know what? That bitch don't got a storyline. So it doesn't shock me that she would pick a fight with uh, Gigi Lamain, who's seemingly doing better than she is or ever did in her short-lived career, bitch. But you know what? So that's what's going to be happening at the Love and Hip Hop South Africa alongside Shane Eagle, DJ Speedster and all of them unknown bitches that unknown, you know, watched out rappers that nobody cares about. But anyway, that's also coming and whatsoever. Anyway, congratulations, Robert Marawa. We're gonna move on. We spend a lot of time on you and you clearly don't deserve this much airtime, especially here at the Pope Bitch. Anyway, you know what, give me a second. Not Moja Love, Mojo Life is coming and standing behind Sam Kela or Sia Kela or whatever that fat bitch and whatever that fat nigga bitch that couldn't finish school and whatnot. You know what? Okay, let me break it down for you. So what had happened, right? So there is a, a recorded episode that was played or aired rather by Mojo Life and whatever. So you know that uh, Sam Kela or Sia Kela, that fat nigga, right, is sort of in a relationship or traditionally married to this school child and whatever that bitch right so that's fine so you know what if you've watched the show even if you've watched a couple of episodes and whatever you would realize that that not 
what that same Taylor right is busy abusing that bitch and whatever. I'm talking emotional abuse. It, it ended up getting physical, recorded this time, and what not. So Mojala have played that episode and whatever. So obviously because of the backlash, they came back and whatever. Now they gave Sam Taylor more airtime where he was like doing that fake his apology and whatever. At least that bitch got an apology. I'm never gonna get mines. Anyway, that bitch comes, uh, that Sam Taylor comes and apologize and whatever. And you know what? So everybody's just like, you know what? This is wrong and whatever. Of which it is wrong. I'm also saying it is fucking wrong. You know what? Anyway, now much I've released that half-baked as apology statement, whatever, explaining why they had to give some Kela more airtime and not. I think it's not Tando or Tando or whatever, why they couldn't give Tando more airtime. Because if there's a story that is probably worth hearing, it would be Tando's story telling us exactly what is happening or the shit that she's going through in the hands of, of that abusive ass nigga. This story is very sad. Obviously, you know what, we stand with her and whatever. It's just so sad. You know what, but anyway, we're just living in this note and I'm just gonna go and you guys take care of you and whatnot, you know, and pray for Tando Luetu or Tando or whatever that, some little bitch. You know what, I'm out. Bye, babies.